Welcome back to Bash Bros on episode oh God 16. You would think I would have this written down by now, but I don't. Episode 16 of Notorious Pro Wrestling. Uh, the TEW Let's Play series where we find out what exactly would happen if Conor McGregor started his own wrestling promotion. And it's been a while, so for you guys, well, no, well, when I, mean, when I say it's been a while, I mean in-game. For you it's been a week, for me it's been a day. In-game, it's been several weeks since you were last with us. So the last time you guys were here, we started the women's tournament, which has been going along swimmingly. Uh, if we take a look at the bracket... All in all, we have had three matches so far in the women's tournament. Killer Kelly versus Maki Ito is the one you guys were here for last. And also since then, we've had two more. So we've had Tessa Blanchard versus Asuka and Kaylee Ray versus Amy Alonzi. As a part of the women's tournament, I've kind of had many narratives going throughout this. So, for example, Tessa Blanchard, after her match with Asuka, beat the absolute shit out of her uh, until... Maki Ito, Maiko, Satamura, and Riho came out to make the save. You know, all the Joshi wrestlers to make the save. So I want this mini narrative of Tessa, who, for all the rumours we have heard, is maybe a wee bit racist. From now That's just from the rumours. That's just from the rumours. Um, I want her, like, uh, a mini narrative of her versus kind of the Joshi wrestlers. And then uh, Kaylee Ray had a promo before her match with Amy, where uh, Viper kind of interrupted. And, so, and they kind of had words, you know about how they're destined to do this uh, for, or destined to face each other for the rest of time. Because they have quite a storied history in ICW. So I kind of want to carry that mini narrative forward as well. The reason I want these mini narratives is because, one, it makes the tournament more interesting if these guys ever face each other. And even after the tournament is over, if the tournament is not a one-off, you need these mini narratives to kind of spin out into their own storylines for an entire division. In terms of world news, WWE had their WrestleManias, night one and two. So I kind of want to go see how that went for them. So night one got a 76, which is the maybe a bit low for them, but still very good. Edge beat Roman Reigns in a 76 match. Drew McIntyre versus Kevin Owens in a cage. Oh, that would have been great. That should have been invented. Bray Wyatt and John Cena beat Daniel Bryan and Rey Mysterio. Not saying that wouldn't have been a great match, but that's a weird tag team. And then looking on to night two, Edge defeated Sami Zayn. Wow, back to back. So it's interesting how the AI didn't split it brand and brand, almost. They just did two, pretty much just two random pay-per-views slapped together night after night after night. So Edge beats Sami Zayn. That is a good. That would be a cool match, but that did not rate very well. Drew McIntyre versus Bobby Lashley did not rate very well either. Ask a bit, be Alexa Bliss in the cage match. That would have been a good match, and that should have been evented. That. I suppose while we're here, we'll also maybe look at their championships, which I think always fun after a couple of months in. So. Drew still going strong as WWE Champion. 24 is 24 7 Champion is Mustafa Ali. This database started in January 2021, so. Uh, Big E is Intercontinental Champion, okay. The Dirty Dogs, I think is their name, is are the tag champs in SmackDown. Sasha Banks is still the women champion on SmackDown. Jeff Hardy is US Champion. I should probably update the US title picture, but we'll get to that. Edge Universal Champion and uh, Jack and Shayna Baszler are still women tag champs. Okay, so nothing really weird yet. Mustafa Ali being 24-7 champion is probably the weirdest one there. Enough about other companies and their pay-per-views. Let's talk about our company and tonight where we have the excellence pay-per-view. So we're going to do a wee rundown of all the storylines going into this so you're all caught up for the matches. I'll do this for every pay-per-view now that we're kind of doing larger gaps in between so you don't miss any key storyline plot points, I suppose. So tonight on the card, we have Maiko Satomura versus Bobby Tyler in a round of 16 match in the women's title tournament. No real story around this one. This is just a, one of the matches going in, or one of the matches for the tournament. Uh, we I did discuss earlier how Maiko is a part of that mini feud with Tessa versus the Joshi wrestlers, but other than that, no real story going into this one. We then have Curtis Axel versus Grado in a hardcore match. So after Axel humiliated and insulted Grado to his face, they brawled, leading to a one-on-one -on -one match where Grado got the pin over Axel. It was a flash pin. The week after then, Davy Boy Smith confronted Axel, reminding him he has a family legacy to be proud of and that being beat by Grado is 
tarnishing that legacy. The week after then, Davy Boy Smith defeated Grado and after the match, Davy Boy Smith handed Curtis Axel a chair and encouraged him, shouted at him, screamed at him to attack Grado with the chair and Axel just beat the shit out of Grado with that chair. Leading to this pay-per-view match being a hardcore match between Curtis Axel and Grado. Next up is the Grizzle Young Veterans uh, versus Easton Reese and a mystery partner. And I'm going to say it right now, you're just going to be very disappointed <laughs> with who the mystery partner is going to be. Uh, when we get to the match itself, I'll discuss what happened and why you'll be disappointed with that. But yeah, this match came about after Easton Reese called out Doug Williams, claiming he wanted a rubber match after both getting a pinfall over each other in the past. After this challenge, then Easton Reese attacked Williams, leading to the Grizzle Young Vets to make the save. The following week, during their match, Doug was able to beat Easton, and Easton, being annoyed by this, attacked Doug until once again the Grizzled Young Vets made the save and challenged Easton Reese to get a partner and face them at the pay-per-view, leading to the match tonight. Next is the Cyborg Wolves versus the Kings of the North. Yes, the Kings of the North have returned. After Bonesaw was sidelined with an injury at the Obsession pay-per-view, the Kings of the North made their return last week, last week, last week, costing the Cyborg Wolves their match against the Filthy Generation. So now tonight they look to seek revenge on the Cyborg Wolves. Two weeks ago on Wanted, Sonico beat A.S. Austin but then was attacked by a debuting Pentagon Junior after the match. And after sending cryptic messages to each other via boogie messages on the screen and the lights going out I guess, Conor McGregor confirmed that the pay-per-view match between Pentagon Jr. and Sonico is happening tonight. Rich Swan then debuted as the mystery partner for the Cyborg Wolves at the pay-per-view last month, picking up the win against the Filthy Generation and the Filthy Generation did not like that. Not one bit. After several attacks on Rich Swan by the Filthy Generation, it is now time for Stevie Boy and Rich Swan to come head to head in tonight's pay-per-view. And finally, the main event is the Cowboy James Storm versus Chris Hero for the NPW Championship. James Storm won a number one's contenders match in week one versus Easton Reese and Ace Austin. Since then, these two have traded verbal jabs at each other, which led to a contract signing that Ace Austin decided to interrupt, <laughs> leading to James Storm putting his title shot on the line against Ace Austin. James won and the match will go ahead as planned tonight at the pay-per-view in our main event. And there you go, that is you caught up for everything you need to know going in to the pay-per-view tonight. So I am now going to cut ahead and book it. And we are back and you may notice this big fuck off yellow button at the end of the fucking sc- mm. Oh, you know what? Mm. Okay, it's gonna, gonna, gonna calm down. It's gonna calm down. So, there were a couple of issues booking this fucking show. That being that Rich Swan and James Storm were not available. So, Rich Swan was not available for his match with Stevie Boy and James Storm was not available for the main event of the pay-per-view. And that stung a little. As you could imagine. So GM Storm, uh, they're actually both tied up with Impact and NWA. So uh, fuck Impact and fuck NWA. And here's what I've done to try and <laughs> put a semi-coherent show together now. So uh, on the pre-show, McGregor's going to come out and be like, Hey, we found GM Storm knocked out backstage and we've taken him to a hospital. Um, so we're going to have a battle royal for his spot in the main event. That'll happen all on the pre-show. Doug Williams will win that. Because I think, although we've already seen Doug versus Hero, and then we're going to see it again next month, we can kind of swing it that he loses again, and that really demotivates him to the point where he's willing to put his career on the line. And Hero can also be like, I've already beat you twice, why should I face you again? On top of that, GM Storm they can then come back and start accusing people of, Yo, you attacked me, you attacked me, you attacked me. And one of them people can be Doug, because like obviously Doug benefited from being from James being out. So you could be like, oh, you attack me, because you, you're I know you're desperate to get that title shot. I want so you attack me, so you could get the main event spot. Also, James then can get his title shot on a week of wanted. So that kind of covers that. Secondly, and this is I like I was, I was stuck, so I was just like, you know what, screw it. Uh, there's a segment later with Stevie Boy who uh, gets st stopped by McGregor. Stevie's walking out the door and McGregor's just going to be like, where are you going? It's like, it's like, well, Rich Rich isn't here. He's stuck in America, so fuck you. I'm taking the night off. It's the only thing I can do. It means we got a Conor McGregor promo, which will bump up the ratings. And we're going to need every single bit of a good rating because we have two matches that were pre-booked and they're not going to be on it, so we're going to take a big penalty. 
But unfortunately, these are the challenges whenever you're a small company and using quite high profile stars in it. It's my own fault. I should have seen if they were available with their schedules, but I didn't. Anyway, it'll be interesting. People love to see a train wreck and a car crash, and this is what this is going to be. But I, I, I am curious to see how this goes. I, I have definitely spammed as many Conor McGregor segments without being silly because I want. it's the only way to recover this rating, so I fully accept that. So let's do it. So as I mentioned before, Conor McGregor comes out and announces that yes, Jim Storm was attacked backstage and has been taken to the hospital, forfeiting his spot in the main event. They will have a battle royal tonight to decide his replacement. 90 segment. Good. Good job, Connor. Like, give us like five more of those. <laughs> Main event itself, featuring Carlos Romo, Charlie Cotter, David Boy Smith, Doug Williams, Judy Fleish, Nathan Cruz, Oshin Delaney, Rob Lynch, Stevie Boy, and Sugar Dunk. Went 15 22, and the final four were Davy Boy, Charlie Carter. Oh, good for you, Charlie. Well done. Rob Lynch, and Doug, who won it then? Uh, Charlie Carter got the most, so I didn't pre-book that, I just kind of, the only one I pre-booked was that Doug should win. Davy Boy was the runner-up and Charlie Carter got the most eliminations. Yeah, yeah, love to see it, I guess. 47 overall, that's quite good for uh, Battle Royale. Starting the main card then, in round 16 match, Michael Satamora defeated Bobby Tyler in 15-26 with a frog splash. Bobby got a 28, which is not great, and Michael got a 51, which is fantastic. Uh, Bobby debuted her 4D gimmick, which I believe is what she's using in NXT UK right now, under the name Stevie something, I think she's called in NXT UK. Uh, but it got very good, so I'll take that. 44 overall, which is good, it's better than the, the last one we saw, which was the Killer Kelly, which was like a 36, so it just kind of shows how good Michael really is. And then a promo from the Kings of the North saying, you know, Cyber Wolf, or Cyborg Wolves thought we were dead, you know, thought we were forgotten about, you can't kill off the Kings of the North and they're back for revenge. 35, those guys were never a great promo, so it's fine. Moving on to the match itself then, Kings of the North defeated the Cyborg Wolves uh, in 15-14 when Bonesaw pinned Lycos Jr. using the red hand of Ulster. 43 match, which is decent. Uh, good performances from Corvin and Bonesaw and good from Kid Lycos, again, it's just Kid Lycos Jr. that's let down a wee bit. Moving on then to the Curtis Axel and Grado match, which is a hardcore match. Uh, Curtis Axel defeated Grado in 947 with the Henning Plex. Got a 41, which is probably the best match Grado's done in a long time. Got a 49 from Curtis, which is really good. He definitely carried that. And Grado, he got a 35, which is what I'd be expecting. So after the match then, uh, David Boy Smith comes out and celebrates with Curtis Axel and then they go and seriously injure Grado. Uh, I'm thinking like, you know that thing where they put the chair over the person and then ram them into the, the ring post, something like that. And this will kind of be the start of Grado taking a backseat in, in wrestling and becoming more of a manager type. The plan is now Grado's going to kind of come back in a week or two with like, you know, the, the neck brace and like a tweed jacket and... If you really want to ham it up, put him in the wheelchair because wheelchair gimmicks are always quite goofy. Come back and look for tag teams to kind of help him take revenge on uh, Curtis Axel and Davy Boy. Okay, so just before the Grizzled Young Vets versus Easton Reese and Mystery Partner, the Mystery Partner is revealed to be Chris Adonis, former Chris Masters. Woo! I can actually hear the lack of a reaction in my head. <laughs> so there's a story behind this. I, I did mention it before. Chris Adonis was not the first choice. The first choice was going to be Scott Steiner. The reason that didn't happen was I originally booked this storyline before my kind of month and a half break from this game. Uh, in between the episodes kind of uploading. When I came back, I was like, why the fuck have I got Scott Steiner pending a contract? That makes no sense. So I deleted it. And then I kind of caught myself on when I was looking through the storylines being like, oh, oh, he was supposed to be the mystery part. Oh, yeah, shit. So I had to scramble to find a suitable replacement. And I went with Chris Adonis because one, he is kind of known. Like he's done a bit of, obviously he had his WWE stint and he did a, a stint in Impact and GFW. So he's kind of known. Plus... Him and Easton Reese are both big, muscular guys, big, strong men. They could totally work together. Like it's the best I could do. <laughs> it is like I was really scrambling. I was like, all right, kind of a kind of a legend that's still active. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, fucking Chris Masters, be happy with it. 
So the match itself, Chris the Young Vets defeated Eastern Reese and Chris Adonis when Zach Gibson pinned Chris Adonis with the ticket to ride. Chris Adonis was the weak link, how about that? Um, this is not a long contract, I only brought him in for like a month, maybe three. He literally, he'll eat the pinfall in this match, maybe another pinfall and that's when Eastern Reese is just going to be like, alright, fuck this shit, you're holding me back and just beat the shit out of him, so... Uh, 49 overall, which is good. Uh, Grizzly Young Vex and Easton Reese are performing really well, so... Uh, Zach Epson got a 56, which is fantastic. Jim Drake got a 52, which is fantastic. Adonis 29. And Easton Reese with a 51, again, really strong from Easton. And the segment that I mentioned earlier, so... Stevie Boy is exiting the building when Conor McGregor comes up to him, he's like, where are you going? Stevie's like... Rich Swan is stuck in the US, what the fuck am I gonna do? I'm taking the night off. And he brings him and his boys out. Uh, I just had Connor do all the talking in this just to keep it the highest rated segment as possible. Again, just to try and recover this overall rating because I know it's going to be a bad one for the show with two missed pre book gains. Plus, like the idea of just <laughs> Stevie Booker going to come out, I nah, fuck you, I'm going <laughs> taking the night off. Uh, 89 overall. Pentagon Jr. versus Sonico then. So, uh, Pentagon defeated Sonico in 2021 with a top rope styles clash. What? Some of them weird. One of the, some of the moves in this are weird. Um, 53 overall, which is very good. Um, Pentagon got a 55 and Sonico got a 46. So Sonico was able to keep up with Pentagon all right. Yeah, so this is this is just the first match. These two are going to feud for a wee bit and it's going to lead to another debut down the line. Next up then, Chris Hero with a promo. Chris says he doesn't care who he faces. It could be, uh, it could be James Storm, it could be Grado, <laughs> it could be anyone, but he's not ready to give up this title just yet. 52, so has a good promo from uh, Chris. And then the match. So, Chris here defeated Doug Williams in 25 29 uh, with the Hangman's Elbow. And that's his first defense with the title. 57 match, which I expect from these two. Doug had a 54 and Chris had a 59. So, Chris, just again, proving why he's the best wrestler on our roster. And Doug's absolutely no slides either. So, and that's the show. <sighs> right. Two really strong segments and a, a 57 main event. I'm thinking. I'm thinking 55, which is lower than what we had. We had a 59, I think, in our last pay per view. So, 55, 61. Oh, thank God. Oh, okay. I'll take it. That those it was the Conor McGregor, the Conor McGregor segment saved our lives there. 61. I am very happy with that. God bless Conor McGregor <laughs> and his promo skills. I don't like spamming that because I think it's cheap, but. To save this pay-per-view, I'll take it. Just to save it from the pre-booking stuff, I'll, I'll take it. Uh, some mixed speeches. So, Chris was dope. Not you, Chris Adonis. No, not you. Doug Williams was dope. And... Who else was dope? Pentagon's pretty dope. Pentagon, you were dope. Um, well, they complimented, complimented, and complimented. Boom. Yay, yay, yay! So there's no news coming out of the tapings or the pay-per-view, but I do want to look at the NWA pay-per-view and the Impact pay-per-view, because if they scored more than us, I'm going to be pissed because they took two of the talent. So um, da -da -da -da. so Impact's Rebellion, we got a 61, they got a 51. Red Swan beat Moose for the title, and James Storm wasn't on this, I don't think, I can't see him. Yeah. Okay, so, so Rich, you could have been on a much superior show, so I hope you feel bad. And then NWA got a 48, mate, a four, come on. Uh, they didn't use him, either. Oh, they didn't use James Storm either. So literally, we could have used James Storm. Oh. Mm. Oh. You, oh, oh. Billy Corgan and who the fuck's the booker of Impact? You can go fuck yourselves, just can go fuck yourselves. Don Cal or Scott Damore. Yeah, you can both go fuck yourselves. I'm fine, I'm fine. It's cool. Look, we had a good pay per view. I'm happy with the results. So I think you guys will be back for the next wanted tapings. Um, I have the formation of a tag team going to happen. Or I, I'm planning the formation of a new tag team, which I think will be interesting to come back with. Plus, we will probably have James Storm finally return and get his title match against Chris Hero. So yeah, I think that's what we'll have. Yeah, so next week, you'll be back next week um, for Wanted, and then 
after that we'll see yes yeah, so next week then we will have james storm versus chris hero for the title uh continue the women's title tournament and have the formation of a new tag team thank you very much for watching as always if you did like it please subscribe please like and if you have any ideas any at all please do put them in the comments like i said the the greater will become a manager idea came from uh, what are you guys commenting and I really appreciate that I love the idea of you guys having a say in kind of the direction of where the company is going and where the storyline should go um, so again thank you very much and I will see you next time on Bash Bros <laughs>